Today's episode highlights an incredible psychedelic positive couple who've experienced relief from chronic conditions through cannabis medicine. Sam shares how turning to the plant helped her get off of a peak of 13 medications and root into a robust yoga practice. Tyler describes the journey of leaving and returning to one of the most conservative towns in Texas through the lens of an avid plant advocate. Keep listening to hear how this kind couple shares as much knowledge as they can with those ready and willing to put their healing hope in cannabis. Let's go to the show. Hello, and welcome to Six Degrees from Cannabis. I'm your host, Tori Rarick, PharmD and Holistic Healer. Each episode features a candid conversation about how connecting with the cannabis plant has enhanced an individual's wellness journey. Here to honor the plant, talk about healing, and have fun. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Tonight, I'm speaking with a couple. Tyler and Sam are a couple in their 30s who moved across the country for access to medical cannabis in 2015. Together, they were able to free their body of pharmaceuticals. They became very involved in cannabis activism and sharing their knowledge of the plant with others. At the start of the pandemic, they moved back to Texas to assist family and continue to educate the people around them about the cannabis plant. Being the legalities are different, they are doing their best to stay legal and follow laws, all while sharing the information and dismantling the stigma from decades of propaganda in Texas. Sam is on the Texas Medical Marijuana Registry and is navigating the waters of the new medical program. They have been featured in Newsweek, Cosmopolitan, Culture, and many news publications. Welcome, Tyler and Sam Prock. Thank you for having us. I'm very excited. Um, Terrence is also with us, their dog named after Terrence McKenna. So welcome, Terrence. (laughs) The very first, okay, no, let me just spill to everyone listening. Um, I love this couple. (laughs) These these two are like a dream guest of mine. And I'm so excited that after everything is settled with the, well, not necessarily with the pandemic, but you know, them, I met them in Colorado and um, through this activism and um, then they moved to Texas. It felt like as we were getting to know each other. And so now everything feels a little bit more settled where you are in life and now you have a dog. And so it's really sweet that this has come full circle and I'm seeing you right in front of me and we finally get to chat about your journey in cannabis. We're so happy to be here. I am so grateful that you even, you know, chose us to be on your podcast. Oh, for sure. I've learned so much from you just by like witnessing. So the very first thing I like to do with my guests is pull a card, an Oracle card from my highly inspired Oracle deck, Follow Your Heart Oracle. And I want both of your takes, of course, on how you tie the concept of the card back into your relationship with cannabis. So take a deep breath. And I'll choose the card of the episode. Okay, this is interesting. Be still. So we Mm -hmm. have a cutie cosmic third eye maybe situation, a heart in the middle of the eye. I'd love to hear from each of you. How does cannabis help you with being still? Um, Well, for starters, just meditation alone. um, It has really helped me like get back into my body um, and just be able to, to be, to be still, to hear the sounds, smell the smells, be completely in the present moment. Same, only, you know, <laughs> slows down the thoughts. Mm-hmm. Totally. And for those of you just meeting Sam, she has a very full yoga practice. So could you bring in that aspect as well and share a little bit about that relationship? Uh, Absolutely. Um, So I was lucky enough to uh, be able to participate in uh, Rachel uh, Carlevel's uh, Ganjasana program, uh, which is a cannabis yoga uh, program. And it, it completely changed my life, um, adding cannabis to my yoga practice. Um, it just 
incredibly deepens it. Uh, it allows you to feel more into your body, be completely present, feel all of the different muscles and how everything works together. You can feel the entire pose or asana as one, as opposed to just like, I'm touching my toes, I'm bending my knees, I'm lifting here. It's all encompassing. It becomes the pose uh, when you are influenced by cannabis. There's Terrence. And Sam, did you have a yoga practice prior to Ganjasana? Yes. <laughs> um, so let's see. My practice started, I think like eight years ago. Um, and it started when I started consuming cannabis, actually. Mm. Um, back when I first started, um, I, I don't remember the exact year, uh, but I remember feeling this extreme urge to move my body. Um, and then a coworker invited me to Bikram yoga. And so I started doing that. And then it was like a year or a year and a half into that practice when I decided I can just do this at home. I can, there's several videos, you know, I don't have to pay um, this fee to go to this class. I can do it at home. Uh, and then I was like, well, what, what, what would happen if I took a big bong rip and then <laughs> went and did my practice? Um, and it, it was a game changer. I was totally blown away um, by what I felt in my body, how my mind was able to calm down, how just everything. Uh, I was laying in Shavasana at the end of the practice, and it was the first time that I ever felt truly relaxed. And I could see, you know, my third eye was just widening, uh, and I could see rainbows and colors and things that I had never seen before. Um, and so that really jump started like cannabis and yoga pair so beautifully together. Cool. Um, and so I've just done that ever since. <laughs> ever since. Okay. And then Tyler, where are you on this spectrum of yoga? Do you join Sam? Sometimes. Um, I join her in the practices, not as much as I should, but I did a lot in Denver and we, okay. uh, at least once a week. And we had a really good practice going where uh, I would get home and then I would join a class that she taught in an apartment complex that we lived in. And I think by doing that, we lived there for about three years and she taught a class every week that we lived there. And I think that was a, a big part of uh, my improvement, mm -hmm. uh, getting to the point uh, with scoliosis where um, I wasn't taking any back pain pills and it wasn't hurting as much as it used to. And I think that I can contribute that to that time where I was able to use cannabis freely and have a, an, an active yoga practice. Wow. Okay. That's big. We've got to get into your stories because they're incredible. So <laughs> for each of you, what was your original perception of the plant and has it shifted? Oh, it has definitely shifted. So we were both a product of dare, you know, growing up like drugs are bad. Everything's bad. Also, my dad was a cop for 30 years. Right. Um, so I just assumed that like everything that he did, he did because it was for the good of the people. Um, and, you know, that's not necessarily the case. They just enforce the law and whether that law is good or bad. Um, and so, you know, throughout middle school, high school, all that, I was like, nope, drugs are bad. And then it likes medical marijuana started to become more of a thing. Definitely not in Texas at all, but there was, you know, the word was getting out. And I was like, well, if it helped, if it's helping people, it's helping people. It's, it's not for me mm -hmm. until um, somebody had mentioned it to me after I was on a slew of pills. I was taking 13 pills a day. I was on like seven different prescriptions. <sighs> It was a mess, a mess, a mess, a mess. So they had diagnosed me with like uh, subacute cutaneous lupus, hypothyroidism, Schwargen syndrome, arthritis, costochondritis. Um, I think there's a couple of more in there um, that I had forgotten about. Um, but it was like every time that I would go to the doctor, I was getting put on a new pill and then I would go back to the doctor, I would have a new side effect, they would give me a new pill. Um, instead of getting to the absolute root of the, the issue, which was that, well, I'm a very fair skinned redhead. So I just shouldn't be out in the sunshine. I'm allergic to the sun. Um, two, um, 
I was eating junk and crap. So my inflammation was through the roof. So my joints were hurting. Plus I was an ex gymnast, ex cheerleader, brutally abused my body, forcing myself into various positions and things. So, um, so yeah, my body was hurting. Um, and then, you know, having anxiety and depression and then, you know, within the past few years gotten diagnosed with PTSD. Um, that's where a lot of my other symptoms had occurred because uh, my nervous system was just absolutely completely shot. Totally. So, um, so cannabis was not the gateway to drugs. It was the gateway to healing for me. Mm. What um, was it going through your, like, what was that turning point when, when like they were adding the meds and stuff? Like, was there a point where you're like, this is getting to be like a lot? It was, uh, I was like in this cycle of working to pay for the pills so that I could force my body to continue standing on my feet eight hours a day as a surgical tech. Whoa. These are things like that, you know, just like don't really cross my mind or probably a lot of people's minds in like the struggle of managing health and your story. I don't find it to be uncommon. Like being a pharmacist, I've definitely seen many people on six, seven, eight into the teens medication. So I'm enjoying this story. I'm so grateful to hear from you on other paths because um, it's not uncommon. Uh, so yeah, you were saying you're like trying to maintain, you're just trying to maintain. Right. Um, right. And so when that person mentioned it to you, like, what were your thoughts? Um, you know, I wasn't opposed to it, you know, and, uh, I was like, I don't want to cough because I have allegedly this costochondritis. And so like, if I, if I cough too much, like it's gonna have arthritis in my chest, it's going to make me hurt like extremely bad. And they were like, oh, well, I have a volcano vaporizer. It's the smoothest way to consume and you're not going to cough. And so I took the bag and I took a few hits off of it. Um, and then I was able to sleep for like deep sleep for like the first time since I was in like middle school. So, uh, and so then that was just like a, you know, the click of the switch, like, oh, this actually isn't a drug. It's, it's an herb. So then were you two together at that time? Were you able to work each other in that way? Like, what were you thinking, Tyler? Were were you already on the cannabis train? Where was Sam? Were you like, no, no, we got on together at the very same time. Uh, It was the same (laughs) friend was like, well, this could help you, Sam. And he said, and it could help with your back pain. And so my first time was basically also on a volcano vaporizer and Sam was sleeping very well. And I had, uh, it was experiencing no back pain in a way that I had never done before. So. And, and it was so quick. I mean, you know, just two believers just right off the bat. So incredible. Uh, so then was it like game on? Was it like, okay, this is the mission. I mean, you're still in Texas. You're still going to see your doctor. Right. And there's the fear of the, the drug tests. And, and doctors uh, even now aren't that familiar with how to transition or even simultaneously um, have these right. therapies going. So then, then what were the next steps? Um, let's see. So. Uh, at that time, uh, Colorado had just uh, allowed um, for like recreational, yeah. uh, and then their medical was doing pretty well. Um, and so we just started learning, um, and we were playing the very scary "let's just get meds in Texas" game. And so that's and so neither of us had ever been in trouble for anything ever and so we we researched well what happens if you get caught with this plant and it's really bad Mm -hmm. and and since we were using it for medicinal purposes we quickly learned about concentrated cannabis Mm -hmm. um, and which was even more effective but also a felony in texas instant bad news bears yep and so around that time, as we we're like researching and learning, um, there, there was a whole other shift of like, when you're growing up, you think that like, you know, with my dad being a cop, like the government is good. They have their, your best interested in mind. And then you learn about cannabis and you're, and it's like, I could yeah. grow like an entire garden of plants to kill an army and that's legal. 
but if I grow one cannabis plant in my backyard, I'm a felon. Mm -hmm. So the the government does not have your best interest in mind. Um, So then we started getting active in DFW normal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, And then we learned about all of those stories, um, including the children that had been helped. And then all of the like extremely traumatic stories of children that had been ripped away from their families. Um, some even dying in foster care due to their parents having cannabis, just horrific. Completely. Um, so it just like really fueled our passion to make change. But also our, our awareness of how much time the, the, these off cops and these people are wasting on, mm. you know, just cannabis users. And so it wasn't too much longer um, that on top of just finding out how fun Red Rocks was. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we went up for a concert. Uh, he proposed to me in Colorado. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, you know, it was our first time really being out of Colorado. And we were like, what is this weather? There's no humidity. This Ooh. is an option. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Cute. <laughs> um, and so then I had like a traumatic um, instant at, at work that completely like shifted everything in my life where I was like, I absolutely cannot do this job anymore as a surgical tech. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was an instance with Tyler's family where they said, oh, you use cannabis. OK, we don't want you around. Judgment. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so um, some of the family had been cut off. Uh, and he wasn't allowed to see some of the kids in his family, uh, absolutely destroyed him and broke his heart. And he was like, well, the only reason I'm here is to, to hang out, to with, hang kids, out with these so. kids. So mm-hmm. peace out. I gave my job a literal two day notice. We packed the car with everything that we could and we slept on a friend's couch. Mm-hmm. Wow. And literally moved car load by car load <laughs> to Colorado. <laughs> That is but wild. We, <laughs> yeah, but we did it. And, we we and did it. It worked, and we had an amazing five years. Yeah, we, yeah. Uh, we figured it out and learned so much. Wow. Met, okay. Probably the most amazing people. Yes. 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 This is true. <laughs> okay, that was a fun question. I'm having so much fun with you too. So, all right. I want to hear, um, maybe from your perspective now, how does the plant serve you? Oh, in many ways, in many ways. Um, it, it helps with my mental health. It helps with my physical body. Um, it helps me connect spiritually. Mm. Um, it, I would say it helps with my emotional regulation as well. Just, you know, body, mind, and soul all the way around. Um, it definitely serves me. Um, it got me off of pills. It helped me started healing. Um, it has helped me make so many friends and so many connections with people. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's a beautiful right. plant, <laughs> beautiful plant. All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> and so creatively, like, you, okay, well, we're, that's the next question. I'm not going to go there. Okay, Tyler, how does the plant serve you? <laughs> <laughs> Similar, uh, you know, helping me stay pill-free off, you know, all the scoliosis, pain pills that they had me on and, and not having to go down the, the road of um, being addicted to, to pills. Right. Um, uh, helping me, you know, with the yoga and getting into the deeper moves so that I can get better. And, uh, and I, I love the people that I've met uh, through sharing the plant with each other or, you know, doing a podcast or working in a, a position or, going to an event somewhere and um it's it's just it's always so positive Mm. uh, the things that we can do together definitely I hear that I wanted to hear about just your transition from the pills to the plant um (laughs) yeah like I guess and even just like the, the lifestyle shift, because you've alluded to it and, and Tyler's mentioned it too, where it's like, okay, the cannabis allows me to get into deeper moves. And Sam, you were mentioning at the beginning of your story, I was eating in this way. So like, 
do you feel that cannabis was guiding you to a healthier lifestyle holistically? Uh, 100%. 100%. It definitely felt divinely guided um, through the cannabis spirit Mm -hmm. that it is. Um, So it definitely didn't happen overnight. It was like several years in the making um, where it's just like these little shifts of like, oh, well, you need to move your body more. So now we're doing yoga and oh, well, you're drinking too many Dr. Peppers and sweet tea. So let's just drink water for now. And And then, you know, we got to Colorado and I had started to like wean myself off of these pills, you know, one by one. I don't need this one. Let's see how my blood work is now. Don't Mm -hmm. need this one. Let's see how it is now. And then we moved to Colorado and I was like, fuck all these doctors. Sorry if I'm not allowed to. (laughs) Explicit. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So I was just very fed up with the entire healthcare system because they, they didn't, they didn't serve me. They didn't help me they only made me worse. So, uh, so when we got to Colorado, I was like, well, my pharmacy's not here. Um, I don't want to go see a new doctor. I don't want to be on any of these pills anymore. I'm just going to quit them all cold turkey. Just done. Uh, not, don't recommend, not a good idea. (laughs) (laughs) It was a very, very rough six weeks. Yeah. Um, but in that time, um, my, my husband had like given me the time, you know, financially, like, don't even worry about getting a job. You just focus on your health mm-hmm. and I'll take care of the money. We'll, I'll make it work. Mm-hmm. So then I was able to just eat edibles, smoke, ingest, like wash in it, bathe in it, mm-hmm. lotion, everything. Um, any way that I could get it in me or on me, I was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it was very rough. Uh, but I made it through. And then once things kind of like settled out, um, I was able to kind of start anew, um, got really deep into my yoga practice, got really deep into meditation, uh, really deep into like rediscovering me mm-hmm. and who I was outside of this career that I thought that I was going to be in for the rest of my life. Um, and then in that time, I was able to pick up a hobby uh, crocheting that I taught myself how to do, which is now my business. Uh, and so, I, yeah, so like, and uh, one of my main sellers is a cannabis top that I designed myself and sell a pattern on Etsy now. Genius. It's, uh, yeah. So I it, own one. It, They're so cute. And mushroom. <laughs> and a mushroom shirt. And yes, mm-hmm. mushroom tops <laughs> and bags. <laughs> what can you do? Yeah, that would be quite the transition. And I'm also curious to know, like Sam and also maybe Tyler, the diagnoses are so big. It's like that, that's how we know patients is like by their diagnoses that like defines them. It's their label. And whether it's like intentional or not, of course, that's what we're treating. So it just becomes them. So Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you started to feel like that back in Texas, where you're like, I am this list of diagnoses and just like how your relationship is to that now you become like identified as as sam's walking nightmare right right like oh well i have fibromyalgia or oh i have lupus so like and then you just kind of get like sucked in so now you're thinking of like all the things that you can't do Mm -hmm. and all the things that like you used to be able to do but now you're like riddled with chronic pain and it, it just absolutely consumes your, your entire life and is really a Debbie Downer on, on everything. Totally. <laughs> so do you feel um, like some of those things just like don't go away, but they feel like maybe they're in remission or just like under control. So like, how do you see yourself now? Yeah. So I definitely feel like, like maybe things are in remission. Um, but the last time that I got my blood work done, it was everything was normal. Um, I still have like, you know, a little bit of joint pain and stuff, but I think that that's normal. Um, and that's like a chronic pain thing, you know, like expectations. And that's something just with like Western medicine that it's hard to like, uh, conceptualize. I feel like. Yeah. So like, I noticed that like when the weather changes, like my body will feel different. Mm -hmm. Um, or if I eat certain things, like my body will feel different. And so um, you can't expect to live your life completely pain-free. It's just like being able to manage the pain and then knowing that like, 
I can't be out in the sun. Like that just exacerbates things. Um, it, it's not good. Know yourself. Yeah. And then like knowing my, my limits mm-hmm. of like not being able to push myself past that. Cause if I do, then that takes away from tomorrow. I'm not going to be able to be as fully, fully there tomorrow. So taking tomorrow spoons. Yeah. Yeah. The spoon, right, theory. The spoon theory. Totally. Do you want to break that down for anyone listening? Yeah. Okay. So spoon theory. So you wake up with like X amount of spoons and then everything that you do costs a spoon. So like taking a shower or doing the dishes or doing laundry and putting it away, it's all, it all takes an X amount of spoons. Um, And so if you run out of spoons, you can borrow from tomorrow's spoons, but then you're, you don't have as many spoons to work with tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just working with your energy levels and and that's like a out. chronic pain type of analogy. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So how do each of you serve the plant? Something I wanted to get into was Sam's amazing creations. I do love my top. I feel so cool <laughs> and vibey in it. And you're so creative. So that's one way that you can, you can share. How do you serve the plant? Um, well, we like to share um our knowledge with people. So the county that we live in now is one of the most conservative counties in Texas. So, you know, we are the hippies of, of our community. And I'm like, we know, we know bigger hippies, guys. Like, yeah, we're not even like, hippies. like y'all think that we're weird. You should meet our friends. We're hippie light. <laughs> uh, but we're sharing as much knowledge as we can and introducing people to hemp because hemp is legal here. Oh, CBD right. is legal here as of now and today. Delta <laughs> eight is legal. Uh, it's, it's a cannabinoid derived from the hemp plant. Uh, they tried to pull it. There was a bunch of, there was a, a lawsuit and they sued the state of Texas. And as of now they have won. Uh, so they're still able to sell it and people are able to have it and consume it. So, and we know several people that it's helping with sleep and uh that we've introduced it to uh they have you know the same thing as as cannabis in colorado they have tinctures and lotions and vape pens and gummies and all all the fun products so right education just, uh, is huge. Yeah. and seeing an example like just being yourselves in this really conservative place is a way that you're serving the planet yeah, just showing up with our little boxes and opening up saying, all right, we got something for everybody. Let's see. Wow. And you get a gummy. Here's a vape pen for you, Grandma. <laughs> oh, I'm excited about Thanksgiving's coming up. There's yeah. about to be a bunch of family members. So we'll just bring a bunch of everything and be like, well, we, we brought goodies for everyone. So, that's so yeah. kind. And, you know, that I think that's one of the most important things right now is mm-hmm. being that connector for people who are still confused and wanting to step out of the stigma, wanting to try it for themselves, but don't have a trusted source. So just being that person. Yeah. Yeah. And being able to introduce it to them um, in the way that suits them the best, Mm because you just have to meet people where they are. And if they've Mm -hmm. never taken an edible or smoked a day in their life, then introducing them to a vape pen um or a, you know a gummy may not be the best option but it, you know giving them like a patch or a lotion for their you know hurt wrist or hurt ankle or knee totally. is uh you know so are you still um like with an advocacy group do you have a normal chapter that we, you're with we don't we don't uh we don't. so we kind of got a little burnt out in Colorado uh We're just going hard <laughs> we, we went hard we went hard and you know you can go and you talk to these legislators and you're like looking them in the eye they're looking at you they're nodding along they're agreeing they're saying yes we'll do this and then as soon as the voting comes around they do the exact opposite and it's just like a stab in the back and uh you just kind of like it's a damper on on things and, and, and then in texas uh legislative is only every other year and so uh, it just happened this year. And so there's not even anything that's going to happen for two more years. Wow. So um, yeah. there's, there's some things that you can do on the local city level, um, decriminalizing uh, and things like that. But, but no, um, no voter-based decriminalization can be done on the state level. Only three representatives. 
And so these are like the old guys, the old guys in their 70s that are awful. Um, and the, the Ted Cruz's and the Louis Gomez are of the country are in Texas. So oh. I know yeah. I was actually really surprised, like when 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 the pandemic came through and I was like, what? The procs are back in Texas. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> they said they'd never go back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really is like. I mean, you you guys are doing well. So, it, and it's it's just so perfect. It's perfect how it tr- how it turns out because um, I'm so happy to see you there holding it down for the plant. Yeah, we are. We're definitely sharing as much knowledge as we have uh, with everybody that we come across. You know, people in line at the grocery store or at the <laughs> bank, or everybody's getting an earful, right? Who, um, <laughs> Whether they wanted it or not. <laughs> I've been, I've been painting the numbers on curbs. Yes. And so sometimes, um, and so in, uh, I was interviewed by both a local newspaper and a local news team. And both times I brought up how I moved to Colorado and uh, was able to get off all these pills. And they talked about that in the stories. And so I was always very impressed that I got the front page of the newspaper to talk about medical marijuana in Tyler, Texas. So we're, <laughs> We're, we're doing our parts. You are uh, definitely so making waves. Yes. 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 We're shaking the tree. So what <laughs> happens? Okay. Because Sam, you've been selling your patterns and your different like creations at the farmer's markets or at different craft markets. So mm-hmm. what's the receptivity? Oh, they love it. Yeah. It's going they great. love it. I mean, people come up and, you know, they're like, have all these little like bags and stuff and everybody thinks that they're like stash bags. And I'm like, you can use them for whatever you want. Right. Uh, you know? <laughs> uh, but uh, I have not come across anybody that was like, you cannabis, no, like get away. Tyler, when you were here in Colorado, you were, you're an accountant. Yes. Yes. So right. I did a lot of work with, uh, for the plant. Uh, for the different companies that I would work. And that's what I would tell the companies. Like I'm doing your accounting, but I'm, I'm working for the plant. But has that trans like translated to Texas or is it a completely different sector now? Not yet. Um, okay. You know, I, I don't have exactly what I'm going to do tied down. I've done some things, um, but I, I still think it's going to have something to do with teaching people mm-hmm. about how to, how to work with the plant. And it doesn't have to be cannabis. It can be the plants that are allowed in your area. Mm -hmm. um so here you get hemp we can have hemp it's so close and so uh starting to work with that you have to have a license i'm gonna get it don't you i love that you will and uh you know and so then that way i can you know work a little bit more with that but also i had gotten this book the other day and and it was about plants and the different ones that can help medicinally and herbally and cannabis was in that book but just working with these different ones just trying to get to the people the plants that they can use without getting in trouble for it that's huge and and like how sam mentioned you know the whole gateway theory like for me cannabis has been the gateway to other herbs like just knowing my medicine knowing my herbs Mm -hmm. i feel like that's what you're speaking to it's like um, right yeah just just knowing yeah the other other options that you can have and then you know like for me um it also got me exciting into uh, growing plants because I realized I don't I don't even know how to grow a plant really right and so you know I, I felt like if I could learn the tricks and the tips of growing the other plants when it's time to grow the hemp and the cannabis is that I'm going to be able to do it better and know what's going on totally so, oh I love we've it been, we've been very busy we've built 24 raised beds in our backyard and grew loofahs and tomatoes your garden is like I just, <laughs> I'm watching you two and I'm like okay they moved to Texas and they just like got everything together they just like <laughs> and, like grew up a garden and like are painting numbers and they're just yeah. you're doing yeah, it just, and are feeling yeah. healthy in their bodies like it's yeah. so incredible yeah. doing no pills still doing it yeah um you know we use a lot of delta eight that because that's available and it, um, it's legal and so it's we're legal. not and you know, know we don't have to worry about yeah that and um uh, what about your relationship to cbd um i mean i do like cbd um i just feel like the the thc component definitely gives me more of the benefit Mm -hmm. Uh, but i do take cbd tincture sure 
Um, and I give my dog CBD. So. Mm -hmm. I'm super happy that we have it. I mean, I've met people that they say that they're seizure free because of CBD alone, just that one cannabinoid. And so I'm just okay. thrilled that, that we have uh, been able to isolate and learn, you know, CBD. And I, uh, I'm a bigger fan of CBN as an isolate mm -hmm. uh, because of the sleep properties and uh, to be able to heal from like muscle spasms because that's something that uh, affects me sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so that's nice to be able to have that as an option. Um, and uh, so it's exciting. Um, I know that there's uh, THCV has been a little bit more popular here lately. Um, I still have like this secret idea that I want to do a CBG uh, because it promotes bone growth. And so I think that can be uh, helpful. And I've seen it out there as a product. So it's not a secret, I guess, anymore, but to make <laughs> right. a toothpaste uh, with CBG in it, because I think that Cause, well, because every time I tell a dentist, they say I'm nuts. So I know I'm onto something. Um, <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, exactly. yeah. The, that way you'd use it and your, your teeth, the parts that like aren't, that are like decaying could come back. I will, I will test that. I'll test that out. Me That's too. Wise. I and I so. like, also like that you've mentioned hemp so many times because hemp can really change the world, especially, you know, we're talking about things medicinally and that's important, but hemp as a textile. That it's is extremely versatile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They made a steel out of hemp. Concrete. Yeah. Hemp. Yeah, Clothes. Yeah. Yarn. Um, you oh, know, it's just that's going to be a whole thing, thing for you, Sam. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, as a gardener now that we've, uh, you realize that we stepped away from, and, you know, we'll tell people what we're doing with the chickens in the garden. And the common response is, oh, my grandma used to do that. My great grandma used to do that. I mean, that. that's how we used to live. Right. But then we, we stepped away for, you know, uh, two generations or three generations. And, and none of us know how to grow anything past an aloe vera plant in your window. Mm -hmm. so, it's wild yeah uh, you know we'll, we'll pass that, these people um, and they're like oh I kill all my plants yeah and I'm like no 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 start with this pothos yeah get some confidence we've completely severed our connection with nature mm -hmm. which in turn has severed our connection with our own spirituality but cannabis brought us back to all this it did we wouldn't totally. have been so interested in any of this on right. our own and and maybe like well enough you know, like it really started True. there with taking your own health back and feeling good in your body and then being able to expand beyond that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Okay. What is the cannabis question that you get asked the most often and what's your answer? So based on location in Colorado, it was specific questions. Mm -hmm. What cannabinoid will help with this? What strain what will help with that? In Texas, it's much more broad. What helps with anxiety? What helps with pain? And, and then where can I get it? <laughs> <laughs> and the sad question that follows up, yes. Right, well, right. Yes. So, so, you know, do we you we know. do our best to, to educate and give resources on like, you know, th this is the place that you can buy it legally. And then if you're wanting to, you know, consume the actual cannabis plant, you mm -hmm. have to make the connection Here's the states right. that you can go to that are the right. closest or, right. you know, and then are you on a list of this, you know, and then, you know, maybe get you in the Texas medical program because mm -hmm. they, they did add some things this year, uh, cancers and PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, and so chronic pain is not on the list. Not on the list. And so you got to make up, you know, some kind of story, your pain gave you PTSD, wow. but then still have a doctor back that up. Mm -hmm. so that you can give that doctor's note to yet another doctor and then get your it's and then get put on right it. yeah it yeah. is a and, little challenge and the, the products are uh they're not up to the standard that we are used to hold on um, mm. okay, yeah you're bringing up something interesting though because part of my shock to see you to move was like you have such a good thing going here in Colorado and right. then access right. it was so fun and I know there's all these different factors and like you're back and seeing your families and, and that's so amazing but just like I guess where did the confidence come from that like you would be able to manage your health still being in a state that's figuring it out I guess because we had we had done it before illegally mm -hmm. um and so 
you know, we still had all those connections he, here in Texas. Um, so, you know, we're doing our best to do it as legally as we can. Right. I'd um, say we're doing really good. Yeah. Uh, but, we you know, it, it's definitely not right. the same and we definitely miss it a, a ton. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I think would ha has helped is uh, now we are in our post psychedelic use as well. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a, a a different mindset that we have now. You know, it, wow. when something hurts, it's okay because we understand more about ourselves versus just this. Turn real, it off. Turn it off. Type right. Of right. 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 This, Usually, this, the the pain has something to teach us or you know all pain is temporary even when it's chronic it you know it, it comes and goes and mm -hmm. a lot of times it's in waves or a tsunami but um but it, it's it's all temporary that um, that's the ticket that's the ticket tyler and that makes so much sense and i think that's even more testimony for these types of plants and psychedelics and all of that mm -hmm. is like you really change you can change your mind you can change your life and and, and once you begin a relationship with some of these plants, you don't have to consume to be able to access the frequency or access that relationship. So mm -hmm. thanks for mentioning that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, final question. What cannabis-centered resources do you recommend? Is there like a favorite book, a favorite podcast, a favorite something? We, we have a list. <laughs> we have a list. Yeah. We do have a favorite book. Uh, we have, we have two books okay. uh so we have the cannabis pharmacy book by michael bax i think is how you say his name um it, it's a great book uh, it goes over like a bunch of the most popular strains yeah. and what those strains could help with and then a bunch of popular ailments and what kind of cannabis could help with those ailments as well as different smoking devices um and it goes into the science of the, the science of, of, of it all, all of it of, of a lot of the plants and, and the growth behind it and so a, a pretty good all-in-one uh book probably the one i've given away the most over nice. the years yeah and then the second book is um ganja yoga by d desalt it's a really cute book uh it talks about cannabis and yoga and how you can combine the two and how it's like a spiritual practice how you can incorporate like breath work into your cannabis consumption. It gives great poses uh, with pictures, how you can consume in different ways. And it's a, it's a really great book overall. My cannabis yoga teacher, Rachel Carlevel, uh, she has gone Jasana. And so she has a, a website and tons of information on there where you can also like sign up for classes and things. Um, and Carla Boyd, um, she does hemp way foods. Um, um, she just got into another a Whole Foods in Colorado recently. Yeah. Yeah. So she sells like uh, hemp burgers and it's all hemp, no soy or nuts or it's all gluten free. And just she has an incredible product. She's been cooking for us at the a couple of the different events over the years. It's and incredible. Just, you know, I have been excited the whole time to see her company explode. Definitely. So here we are. <laughs> it, the time is now. Yeah. Yes. Now, now we're asking her, how can we get you to come to Texas? Yeah. Next <laughs> time. Oh. Uh, yes. Safe access. Um, they have chapters all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, and so yes. we were involved with Colorado mm -hmm. uh, and we plan to be involved with Texas now that we've kind of like given ourselves a nice little activism break. Right. um to kind of like just reground um and settle so mm -hmm. um, um i've been working with a company out of tennessee uh, that does uh cbd and delta eight and uh also has like a little mushroom capsule oh, uh, that has a couple of wonderful ingredients in uh they're called hey good farms Okay. And uh, and there's a code Tyler15 that you can use to get 15% off your orders. Okay, that's dope. That will be in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, Lit and Lucid podcast. Uh, they talk a lot about the business side of cannabis and the complications or regulations and uh, different obstacles that people have had to overcome through their business. Wow. Uh, and then a, a great 
incredible resource is Can a Patient Resource Connection. Go to their website and it'll it'll tell you what, whatever whatever you need to know, like how to consume, how cannabis helps with chronic pain or an autoimmune disease, um, just anything that you would need cannabis information on. It's it's there. Um, cool. Yeah. Cool. Thank um, and then so Haley's Hope, mm -hmm. uh, they do CBD and have a bunch of education and like testimonial stories on their website. Incredible. Awesome. <laughs> You're the hookup. You really are. Both <laughs> Is there anything else that we didn't touch on or anything that you'd like to leave with the listeners? We, we're just so thankful uh, that you asked us to be part of this and that we got to share our um, wonderful cannabis stories. Um, all of the stories that we have bring people together, uh, giving someone uh, the relief that they needed, maybe giving someone uh, extra days in their life. Mm -hmm. uh, I have always enjoyed, uh, you know, from going to the cannabis church and the cannabis events around uh, Denver that we got to go to. Um, and then, you know, just the ones in the future that we'll get to go to uh, around Texas and around the country. Just knowing what's happened the past five to 10 years, I just can't imagine what the, the future has to hold. So it's exciting yeah. to be where we are and Agreed. be a part of it. Agreed. Just thank you for having <laughs> us. Totally. I feel so honored and blessed. Thank you. Have a great evening and good night to Terrence. Thank you so much for tuning in to Six Degrees from Cannabis. If you connected with this episode, please share it with a friend who would benefit from hearing it too. Tap the subscribe button to be notified when the next Six Degrees episode is released. You can find more information about holistic healing, the Follow Your Heart Oracle deck, and what I do by visiting ToriRerick.com. If you message us on Instagram at the number six degrees from cannabis, we'll be sure to message you back. Bliss be with you.